On your screen right now you are seeing a typical search form. From the outside this search form doesn't have anything unusual, it simply records searches in a database, then displays them underneath and this is quite typical for applications dealing with user data. The reason this happens is twofold, first user input is provided to a database, the second part has to do with the fact that the application takes the information from the database and displays it on the page without filtering it out. Well, this means that the web application is susceptible to stored cross-site scripting, which is an attack directed towards applications. Stored cross-site scripting is one of the most prevalent types of cross-site scripting that occurs due to unfiltered input that gets stored and displayed in and from a database, thus allowing an attacker to provide and persist malicious JavaScript payloads to an application. Once an attacker provides that payload, the application stores it in a database and displays it to the user once he visits the page. From the perspective of an attacker, this is a great opportunity to execute malicious scripts in a web browser by including malicious code in a legitimate web page. An attacker can do everything one can do with JavaScript, annoy visitors or customers of your application with alerts, craft redirects, disclose or steal the session cookie of the user, allowing the attacker to hijack the user's session and take over the account, and come up with other interesting things. Other types of cross-site scripting include reflected and DOM-based cross-site scripting. Reflect cross-site scripting reflects the user input to other users without storing it, thus lessening the value of an attack for a nefarious party, but at the same time being less dangerous to victims, and DOM-based or Type-0 cross-site scripting executes the attack payload as a result of modifying the DOM environment in the browser of the victim. Also, always be mindful of the fact that applications promising to not log anything actually can log your input. In this case, this was done on purpose, but that may not always be the case. If we inspect the code, we can see that the stored cross-site scripting manifests itself by us providing user input straight into the database by using PHP data objects to avoid SQL injection. That is a little ironic because we avoid SQL injection but pave the way to cross-site scripting which is arguably just as dangerous. Thankfully, the fix for this issue is rather simple. All you have to do is wrap the stored and displayed out within a function called HTML special cars or HTML entities. Those functions will turn all HTML special characters into HTML entities and thus prevent XSS attacks from taking place. Make sure to wrap the variable in HTML entities before the value gets stored in the database because otherwise you may need to wrap the variable upon output of the user as well. As you can see now, our input that was supposed to redirect the user to a website didn't work because the web application did not interpret our input as plain JavaScript code and turned the less than and greater than characters into HTML character entity references instead. This can be confirmed if we look at the entry in the database. Of course, you also have to worry about other attacks taking place, but that's outside the scope of this video. I hope that you found this video to be useful. Subscribe to see more similar videos and tutorials, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.